instruments are souvenirs, worn and aged as I am myself. Now there are no more than diverting traces of the past, remnants of dreams, shreds of fantasy. And yet I recollect these devices seemed elaborate, precious, because years ago, when I was a prosperous merchant, a singular looking man came to my shop bearing the chart. It was a parchment with so remarkable a texture that I couldn't determine either its substance or origin. I had to agree with the stranger that it wasn't from any of the regions known to merchants of exotic curiosities. He assured me that the chart was alive, that it would alter during a voyage like a mirror reflecting the regions it traversed. Today the kingdom, tomorrow the mountains, and beyond the plains, the sea, countries yet undiscovered. I was disconcerted and asked without conviction to keep the object for a time. Two days later I had to travel and took the chart with me. The stranger hadn't lied. Marks appeared on the surface of the parchment, and during the journey, the shapes shifted with an order and logic of their own. They were definitely the drawn reflections of the countries I was crossing. The stranger was awaiting my return. He sold me the rare object for a substantial amount which I estimated as considerably less than its value. When I questioned him about the provenance of the chart, he dismissed me curtly making a brief allusion to countries far over the southern seas. It was under these circumstances that I presented the chart to our king and obtained from his highness the financial support which enabled me for the magnificence of the kingdom and the glory of God to charter a ship in order to discover the origin of the parchment. We went to sea. The ship was stout. I was accustomed to nautical life and I had traveled a great deal in the course of my work. I intended to explore the austral zone to which the stranger had referred. Even though the task seemed impossible, I had to unravel the secret of the chart. The seas were unknown and the countries even more so, inhabited by monstrous animals and deformed men. Sometimes the contact was easy with these weird beings. The crew were superstitious and looked unfavorably at this enterprise. To rely on a piece of parchment endowed with a mysterious power appalled them. We drifted amidst strange worlds. Several times we landed on coasts that had never been explored. Kings invited us to their tables and we told of our adventures. I believe that I was happy at this time. The crew regained confidence because the spiced wines, food, and the soft arms of the women in strange finery were a wonderful remedy for melancholy and fear. Sometimes, on the contrary, the tribes were violently inhospitable, and we had to beat a retreat before being killed or eaten. choose our ports of call. We were governed by the chart. Lacking knowledge of the region, 
which was the only guide we had in our ignorance of these distant lands. For weeks we didn't know which direction to take. The more we advanced, the only visible indications given by the chart were graffiti, representing the nearby coastline. The rest of the surface was blurred, imprecise, with large unfinished zones which lazily filled themselves in as we navigated. We didn't dare adventure outside the established limits. Now I know that it was learning. I realized this one day and carefully hid the information from the crew. The odyssey continued thus many long days, interminable months during which morale ebbed and homesickness increased. I often said to myself that the winds were responsible for the madness which spread on board. One day my worst fears were realized, the seamen lost confidence. Of course, they knew that the route we were taking was illogical. I was about to resign myself to turn back before mutiny broke out, when suddenly our course became straight. It became obvious to me that the chart was taking us to the land of its creators. Curiosity overcame fear, enthusiasm returned. Once again, the crew and myself were elated in face of the unknown. From then on, I became a man of learning. For 20 years, I have been unable to leave this library because I am bound by the secret. I have read many works relating to wonderful things and the story of the people who conceived these living charts. The compensation for exile surpasses all my expectations. And now, my sojourn is reaching its end, and like other travelers before me, it will soon be my turn to become a messenger, a stranger like he that visited me bearing a blank chart. Ah, the charts. They are sent to men ready to leave on a journey to the unknown. They are animated manuscripts that consume knowledge during the voyage before returning to their country of origin. They are not supposed to be a tool for the traveler, but the traveler a servant for them. Like many of its kind, my manuscript is stored in this room. In front of the sculpture of the world, I dream of journeys. Dreaming is a motionless journey. I meditate frequently, and more and more often I say to myself that a reality ignored is non-existent, which makes me wonder if the coasts along which we traveled in our proud ship 20 years ago weren't created by the representations which appeared on the parchment. In other words, I suspect that the chart was generating the world rather than witnessing its existence. Mm -hmm.